So I spent pretty much all day yesterday doing testing and benchmarking to get to the bottom of this because I've seen a bunch of different articles popping up talking about how Windows 11 hobbles gaming performance, it ruins it, all because of a feature called VBS, Virtual Based Security in Windows 11. And the source of this all seems to be one article by PC Gamer where the guy on one computer, on his particular computer, found that some games performed 28% less in terms of FPS with it on versus off. Now, after seeing that, I was a bit suspicious because 28% seems huge, and the whole reason that Windows 11 has the CPU requirements it does is because all the newer CPUs have hardware acceleration called MBEC, which accelerates virtualization features, so it's less impactful, so it doesn't make sense that it'd be that huge. So long story short, what I'm gonna explain is that basically all these articles talking about how devastating VBS is to gaming performance is pretty much fake news. So I did my own testing to see for myself. I did like 500 data points, 36 different benchmarks. And of course I'll show you those results and then also we can go over some other results from other news outlets. And I'll put the timestamps in the description, but I do highly recommend you watch the whole video because I am gonna get into much more detail about what this virtualization based security and all this other stuff does so you can actually have some context and make a decision about it for yourself instead of just relying on reading headlines. Now for the record, I'm not saying that PC Gamer and that journalist are being dishonest. I'm not saying that they didn't actually get those results. I'm sure they did. And I'm not even saying that their testing was flawed. I'm just saying that their results are not consistent with any other VBS testing that I have seen from myself that I got or other articles. So I believe something else must have been going on on that particular computer that caused that change, not exactly just VBS. Because the spoiler is pretty much everything I've seen and even my own testing you'll see is that VBS does have a small impact on CPU performance. Not necessarily always real world performance, but it's like four to 5%, nowhere close to the 20 to 30% that was in that PC game article that is getting spread around and quoted so much. And actually, I personally saw no drop in FPS effectively. There were some underlying stats that did suggest, but under the hood, there were some reductions in CPU performance, and we'll go over that. But in the real world, for the FPS effective result, there was nothing. So anyway, my whole point is I'm not gonna criticize people for doing benchmarks and getting a result. My point is that if you know that you have a pretty big outlet that people are going to read and you only do a sample size of one and then go into the article and declare in the title that it hobbles gaming performance and to also say in the article that Microsoft is gimping the performance of the chip, this is a harmful idea to put out there without confirming it with additional testing because VBS is an important security feature. It can reduce malware, I think, by like 60% are the stats out there. So now there's really no going back on it. A bunch of people out there already think that this VBS feature is going to reduce their performance on their computer. They're not gonna read any other articles about it, and they're just gonna automatically go and disable it while, without thinking, without hearing anything more about it, even though it's not true to the degree that this article said. And that specifically is true because I did the exact same test with Tomb Raider, which is the one that the PC Gamer had the biggest drop on. I had effectively no drop. So that at least means that it is not always the case that it's a 28% drop. In my case, it was a 0% drop. And I'm not even saying that my test is the right one and theirs is wrong. All I'm saying is we need to figure out exactly what are the causes and what are the circumstances under which you might get a 28% drop, but it certainly is not all the time. So before we even get into the benchmarks, I do wanna clear up a bunch of mistakes that I saw other articles making, not even related to the performance thing, but just VBS in general. So I'm definitely not just picking on PC Gamer here. For example, PC World has an article where they say the feature called memory integrity enables or disables VBS, which is simply not true. Memory integrity is a sub-feature within VBS. Toggling memory integrity simply toggles memory integrity, not VBS. Now again, I honestly don't really blame people for mixing up all these acronyms. There's a whole bunch of them, so I am going to give you guys a crash course on all these different terms so you can wrap your head around it just like I had to spend a lot of time to wrap my head around it, so buckle up. So starting off, VBS, virtualization-based security. As Microsoft puts it, virtualization-based security, or VBS, uses hardware virtualization features to create and isolate a secure region of memory from the normal operating system. So it just kind of creates a very highly protected part of the memory that malware and stuff can't access. Now, VBS is kind of like the top level umbrella feature, and it can be used in several different ways. And I'll give some examples in a second. Another term you might see is core isolation, which apparently, from my understanding, is basically just a marketing term for VBS, virtualization-based security. So I believe they're the same exact thing, 
Not 100% sure on that, but it seems like that based on how Microsoft describes it. And then there's another term, virtual secure mode or VSM, which also is VBS. So you can see how things are a little bit confusing. All right, now next, according to this article by Microsoft, virtualization-based security has three sub-features that use it. So the first one is hypervisor code integrity, HVCI. Remember this one because this is memory integrity, the same exact thing. HVCI is memory integrity, that toggle in the Windows settings. And what this does is prevents attacks from inserting malicious code into high security processes. So just remember that this memory isolation, HVCI, is a sub feature of VBS. You can toggle this on and off separately and it won't affect whether or not VBS is on or off. However, it does require that VBS be on in order to do memory isolation because it is a sub feature. All right, now going back to the article, the other two sub features of virtualization based security are called kernel mode code integrity or KMCI and local security authority, LSA. But those are beyond the scope of this video. I'm not gonna explain them. Just if you happen to see them, that's what they are. Finally, there's the term device Device guard you may see, which is not a feature in itself, just a set of features related to virtualization security. Again, I'm just going to list these out. I'm not going to explain what they are. If you do want to read more about them, I'll put the link to the article in the description. And those primary features in device guard are configurable code integrity, VSM protected code integrity, and platform and UEFI secure boot. All right, so now that you know what the heck all those different acronyms and terms mean, let me quickly go over a couple articles where they did do pretty good benchmarking properly, and then we'll go into my own benchmarking. So Tom's Hardware did a article where they did pretty darn in-depth testing, and they correctly differentiated between VBS off, VBS on, and VBS with memory integrity on as well. And what they saw was relatively consistently around a four to 6% drop, with the absolute highest being around 8%, and some as low as about 1%. And and this included Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where PC Gamer got that 28% drop. It was nowhere close to that here. There's also a German site, Computer Base, where they also did the same testing, where they differentiated between VBS off, on, and with memory integrity on. And again, there was a pretty consistent drop, but nothing crippling. However, there were tests, I will point out, where there was a major drop from enabling HVCI, or memory integrity, but not from just VBS alone. And specifically, those were 3 d Mark Time Spy, which is basically the same result for VBS on and off, but with HVCI dropped 25%. And with the game F1 2020, again, same VBS on and off score pretty much, but HVCI caused a 20% drop. So I have no doubt that there is some special circumstances where certain virtualization features being enabled can cause a big drop, but it's certainly not all the time. All right, so now onto my benchmark testing. I'm gonna first explain in pretty much as much detail as I can how I did the test. So if you want to review it or maybe replicate it or something and even point out some flaws in my testing, you can fully do that. And because PC Gamer had Tomb Raider as the worst result, that's the one that I decided to do. But again, my tests are not to be 100% conclusive either because I am only on one computer doing one game benchmark. I just wanted to make sure to counteract their terrible result and show that th that is not always the case. Now, the computer I did the testing on was a Origin PC laptop. It's not new. It's only an 8th gen i7-8700K, and that's basically the oldest generation possible for Windows 11 for official support. There's only a few 7th gen ones that are. So considering this is one of the oldest possible generations of officially supported Windows 11 CPUs, if I'm gonna get a bad result, it's probably gonna be on this one. This CPU was overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz at the factory by Origin PC themselves. The memory is 32 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 megahertz, it's dual channel. The GPU is a GTX 1080 on the latest drivers, 472. 2.12. It's running on a hard drive, not an SSD, but that shouldn't matter if the tests are being loaded into the memory first. I had the power profile set to high performance, so the frequency is going to be just constantly at the highest. And also, I even did a complete factory reset of the computer using the Windows Reset PC feature, so there's not any kind of third-party OEM bloatware on there. And it's also the latest Windows 11 release build, 22,000.194. And as for the testing, I ran the benchmark a total of 36 different times. So there were three different configurations, whether VBS was off, on, or VBS on with memory integrity, AKA 
HVCI. Then for each of those, I did four different graphics settings in the game. So those were 1440p on high, which was the default and also the native resolution. There was also 1440p on low, 1440p lowest settings. And then the last one was the lowest settings and I dropped the resolution to 720p. And the purpose of this was to try and get different levels of GPU and CPU bottlenecking. So on the high setting, it was bottlenecked 99%, basically 100% GPU. And on the 720p lowest settings, it was 0% bottlenecked by the GPU all CPU. And then for every one of those, I ran the test three times to get an average. So that's a total of 36. And there were 15 different variable results in the benchmark. So times that by 36 and you get 540 data points. All right, now for the results. There's kind of a lot here to go through, so bear with me. All right, so first and foremost, what was the FPS drop between VBS off, on, and HVCI? Well, it was effectively zero, but the other tests were not so simple. We'll get to those. Now, let me explain what you're seeing. Each group of bars was for a different graphic setting. So high, low, lowest, or lowest 720p. And then off means that VBS was off, VBS means only VBS was on, and HVCI means that VBS and HVCI, aka memory integrity, were on. And we can see that with high and low, it was almost exactly the same. There's no drop. On lowest, there was a drop of one to two frames, but honestly, I think that's probably just experimental error. And then on low 720p, the results did kind of vary a lot. That could be because it was 100% CPU determined. Maybe there was other stuff going on in the background of Windows that caused some variables, but certainly there seems to be no kind of causal drop from VBS. Now, next up, if we also look at the GPU bound percentage, it may explain some things. So on high, we can see that it was completely GPU bottlenecked and on low, it still was overwhelmingly like 85%. So it makes sense with it being so GPU bound that any slight drop in CPU performance is not gonna make a difference because that's not the limiting factor. Now on the lowest setting, things get a little bit more interesting. So up until now, you may have been wondering if I was even doing the tests right, there was like no difference. But here we very clearly can see a difference between VBS off and on. It went from a 70% GPU bottleneck down to 55% and then stayed about there for HVCI. So what this at least suggests to me is that we probably shouldn't even expect any kind of performance drop at all unless it's CPU bottlenecked in the first place. And even then, in that case, it really didn't show much of an effect, if at all, in the FPS. Because if we also look at the lowest on 720p, this is not GPU bottlenecked at all. And somehow the FPS actually went up with VBS and then back down with HVCI. I have no clue what that's about. I assume there must be some kind of other factor, maybe again, Windows background processes, whatever. But I guess that kind of goes to show, at least in this test, there are other factors that were way more important than toggling VBS. Now, before we get into the most interesting CPU stats, let me very quickly go through the GPU stats. Now, from my understanding, this basically shows how many FPS the GPU would be able to handle if there were no other bottlenecks. So that seems about right. On high, where it was 100% GPU bound, the average GPU FPS is the same as the real FPS that came out. And we can see here that none of the tests were affected at all by VBS or HVCI, which is expected because that's a CPU thing. The only outlier you will see here, that's because one of the tests where I guess the GPU just had a higher max FPS for some reason. The other two tests for that configuration were back closer to what you would expect, but either way, that outlier didn't affect the average FPS enough for it to matter. All right, so now let's take a look at the other two categories having to do with CPU performance, and these are CPU game and CPU render, and these are probably the most interesting. Now, my understanding of these is that CPU game is the processor thread that kind of calculates non-graphics related stuff, maybe like the AI, user input, general game stuff, whereas the CPU render stat is for the thread that prepares frames to basically tell the GPU what to render. And again, the actual numbers basically say how many frames the CPU is able to do ignoring other bottlenecks. And that seems about right because on 720p, the CPU game average FPS is the bottleneck and that FPS is roughly the same as the real FPS, maybe minus some overhead. Now, again, that's just my understanding based on what I read. I could be not fully accurate on that. Let me know if I am, I'll put a pinned comment or something to correct it. But either way, it's going to show CPU performance. So for CPU game across all the tests, we do see a very slight drop 
in CPU performance. Mostly this is just when enabling VBS, and occasionally there's an additional drop with HVCI. And no matter what the test is, if there is a drop, it's pretty frequent consistently around three to 5%. The only bigger difference was for minimum and maximum FPS, but that's the worst and best case. That might only be for like one second. So of course that's gonna be a little bit more volatile. The 95th percentile stats are again back to around 5%. But again, I will point out that even though there was this drop in potential CPU performance, none of that translated into real FPS performance. Now next for the CPU render stats, it's pretty much a similar story with even less of an impact perhaps. I mean, even the worst minimum and maximum FPS impact was only about 6% here. Whereas on the game one, it was like 11% difference. So the conclusion I draw based on these results, which I will again emphasize is one computer and one game that for this particular scenario, VBS had a negligible performance hit. And considering that for the stats where I did see a drop in performance, the kind of behind the scenes one, which were about four to five percent or so, those are pretty consistent with any other kind of tests that I saw other outlets doing with the same type. So that leads me to believe that in general, VBS on Windows 11 is going to have a negligible impact on gaming performance, in my opinion. I consider five percent performance impact to be negligible because I think that there's probably going to be a lot more factors going on in your computer, background tasks, whatever you install, that are going to have a just as big impact as turning on VBS. So it's definitely not something that I would worry about. And it's definitely not enough of a performance drop to sacrifice the pretty good extra security you get from this important security feature. Now, if virtualization-based security or memory integrity are causing massive drops in performance for some games, for some people, which I don't doubt is happening, I think we need to do more research and figure out, okay, what are the exact circumstances this happens? It could be driver bugs. Maybe it could be part of the game software, whatever. Maybe they're all using certain logic in the programming, something like that. But I don't think we should go out and make articles talking about how VBS on Windows 11 ruins games just scattershotting how bad it is when that's clearly not the case. So hopefully now you'll know to not believe all the different clickbait headlines and also be able to interpret some of the different benchmarks that these outlets are doing. If they are really good, you'll actually know what the heck you're looking at. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments, whether it's a criticism, something you think that I did completely wrong. If I did happen to make a massive error, I will put like a pinned comment I'll put in the description. So definitely check that. If you guys want to subscribe, also be sure to click the bell next to the subscribe button because I make videos about twice a week so you don't want to get those lost in the rest of your subscriptions. If you guys want to keep watching, speaking of clickbait, I did make a video where I talked about one way you might be using your monitor wrong. So I'd show you how to fix it. It's kind of interesting, actually. So I'll put that link right there if you want to watch it. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.